Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Computer Wednesday, we're going to talk about a very interesting topic, home servers. So let's dive right into it. Well, first, what we are talking about? We are talking about personal computer. Well, technically, even a server is a computer. It's just uh, optimized and fine-tuned for this. This is a kind of compromise where it's no longer like, you know, costing a million dollars to build. Uh, but again, it's a bit more efficient, optimized to run one thing and one thing only, basically serving files. Or it could serve a, um, any number of things. Now, uh, what makes it different from a NAS? Technically, it's just a NAS. It's just connected to the internet. That's what makes it a server. Because again, a server will be used if it's a local area network. So, connected to internet. Now, this is uh, very valuable for many of the scenarios, which we'll discuss later. Now, you control the service and uh, basically functions and all, all that that you get out of your own server. Now, okay, let's say you are happy with this, like you want to build this, what are your options? Your options are generally either build it yourself or get many pre-builds. There are many pre-builds from Synology to uh, basically QMAP to other things. There are like many companies that dedicatedly uh, build hardware just for that. And they are uh, quite effective, although not in India because the export tax, they, they make it ludicrous at this point in time. However, uh, even if you see the prices of like Synology's like, you know, disk station and all that, while they are good for what they are, they are ludicrously expensive. And I do not mean like whoa they are idiotically expensive again this is not a mass produced uh, equipment so they do not have the benefit of the scale so many times people you uh, repurpose their old pc now this is one funny thing is like you may be let's say a computer enthusiast and you'll be like hey i'm replacing a computer every uh, let's say three years or five years Yes, the even a 10 year old year computer still makes a very kick ass server and it will destroy these things uh, only side effect probably this might be a bit more uh, optimized in terms of power consumption and if you are building from scratch, basically just from a desktop and all that, you can do that for quite cheap. Like tangibly, you can do this for quite cheap. So this is what we are talking about. Now you might be like, why the heck do you want to go through the hassle of buying these things? Because again, even those disk stations, let's say you don't want to deal with uh, programming, coding and all that, you still have to buy something and uh, populate it with hard drives and hard drives are not cheap. So question becomes, why the hell do you want to go through that many trouble? Uh, reality is many services have a lot of clause for example uh, i recently found out a service that was like hey 50 gb of free space i'm like nice 50 gb is enough that i can upload all my photos uh, they are compressed and all that but at least all of my photos i can upload and be like hey i got an actual one-to-one uh, -one, uh, system of my photo backup but here's the deal the claw was if you do not refresh it every 90 days they will delete the file and some similar things happen in uh, basically google onedrive and all that now again they do not have like that direct delete function but you get the point that's why they are so little it's like you know 15 gb compared to 50 gb so you, there are many many clauses even for enterprise scale where people like uh, line instructors or some other studios are like hey uh, there is an unlimited sector i'm gonna buy this and i'm gonna just upload all my system because generally they will have hardware that exceeds your hardware by 10 times or 20 times so you may be like hey i'll pay for it i'll pay for the monthly price and i'll do that Here's the, even if you can afford it, condition applied, if you can afford it, they will still have a lot of weird clause that will be like, hey, if you actually start to use our unlimited system, we're going to throttle your connection after one terabyte. So even if you have a, like, you know, 40 GPS uh, internet service provider level connection, it's like, yeah, you can't utilize it because they are throttling. So there's a lot of clause that are written there. You have to be mindful, especially if you uh, are dealing with like, you know, something serious. Not it's not a big issue for like let's say uh, 10 GB or something like that. But the moment you start to go into 100 GB, 500 GB, and all that, the class starts to appear. So you have to be very mindful of that. And in terms of data security and control, many cloud services. If you back up your uh, uh, file in the encryption system, they may not uh, like that. They may not flat out say, "Oh, we do not allow that." But if you uh, put a basically encrypted file, they may not uh, recover it properly. And because you have to understand, hard drives are something that is a consumable basically if you have a large data server i can guarantee you there will be just a dude whose sole job is like yeah i replace hard drive every day five six hard drive every day it's normal it's common that's why hard drives are like uh, such notorious things it's like you do not see computers like hey two three server processors and one or five six processors are backup processor but they will always have hard drive as a backup yeah this is a hard drive this is a hot spare this is cold spare you have to do that so Security and control, it's not on your hand. Basically, if somebody hacks your uh, server or their system, basically, and it does happen, it's not something, oh, unpenetrable, nothing will ever happen. No, it happens. It People can hack Apple server. People can hack Google server. Yes, it happens. It's a normal thing. They try to keep it hush hush, but it's a real thing. It's a server that's exposed to everything. You can have a very serious security concerns. Privacy and privileges. 
privacy is a no go the moment you upload your any file even encrypted one i can guarantee you there would be some people's job in google would be like hey this is encryption try to figure out how long it takes to crack it like that's why people are like uh, who seriously deal with serious systems they are like double encryption it's like one encryption another encryption and make sure the keys are distributed to some other individual so even by mistake they do not leak the same file so you can you do not control these things flat out there are a lot of clause security and all that is a serious thing and not to mention flat out for a home user from an enthusiast point you cannot afford this like inherently the price has to go low to this like for 100 gb i have to pay around 1300 rupees a year no that's not too bad but uh, 100 gb like come on i need more than that so the moment i'm like okay let's say two terabyte that's a, like a very good hard drive right now that's 6500 rupees per year uh, uh, basically two terabyte hard drive is almost the same price now here's the deal a normal hard drive lasts for three years if you run them 24 into 7 that's the same price a two terabyte or i can spend a bit more and i like have like every uh, years i can end up buying a hard drive so not only i'll get extra backup and i'll get uh, like you know more capacity and the, it becomes more and more ludicrous the more terabytes you start to add however you have to understand this one aspect yes it is cheaper but it's your responsibility so for example I want to utilize this uh, old uh, PC as my uh, network server. I'll I'll make it like, if the lockdown ever unlocks, so to say. But everything technically should work. This is a around a ludicrously old computer, around 11 years old. It is from DDR2 era. It has PCI 2.0. Even the network connection. That's the biggest hurdle that I found. That it's like a 10 Mbps connection. It's like 100 megabits per second. I have to buy a PCI card to get it to uh, 1000 gigabit per second connection. So yes, it is my responsibility. So if I treat the system well, it will treat me well, it will serve me well. But if I neglect it or let's say put it into dirty power, which is a big issue in India, uh, the system might just uh, randomly die and all my data would be poof. So it is your responsibility. You have to be mindful of that. It's not just, oh, it's cheaper. It is cheaper. But again, because it's cheaper, it becomes your responsibility. You have to be mindful of that. Now, the sole reason why the heck you want to go through so many layers of trouble, even when, when you have the, let's say, budget and all that, is simply backup. Backup is the most important thing. Like as many people who actually do jobs, workings and living off of the computer, the computer becomes the cheap part slowly. Like time and time again, you will like, uh, hey, what happens if you are shooting a multi-million dollar movie? What is the important part? What happens if a camera is destroyed? Nobody gives a damn. They're like, they generally have two, three cameras as backup. But if somebody lost the footage, yeah, you will find out very quickly how uh, you know pissed off people can get when footage is lost rather than the camera loss ah, another come on that's why we have insurance but you lose the footage footage cannot be insured so that's the whole point many times data is the most important thing if you are doing anything serious let's say you are a photographer and uh, you're dealing with some serious client you cannot afford the risk of oops file just oops that oopsie is not acceptable and even if you are working in let's say something lightweight file wise as in like you know a few gigabytes of code based files Again, they start to pile up, they start to become more and more important. And you, if you want to back up, let's say, every versions of it while you are iterating and progressing and, and all that, you have to back those things up for later revisions. So data is more important than equipment itself. In the early years, you'll be like, hey, my computer is the most important. I'll save the computer. If hard drive dies, I don't care. But as more and more data you start to collect, you're like, dude, I can sacrifice the computer, but I need my data back. That's why there is a like, whole thriving industry of people trying to recover their old hard drive. Never try to put yourself in that position. It's always bad. So backup generally is recommended to done offsite. Basically, you'll have one your primary office server, but a home server will give you advantage that in case home catches on fire, you have the file in the office. If office catches fire, your home is safe. Likelihood of both of them catching on fire at the same time, that is a generally espionage or sabotage. In those scenarios, God help you. Uh, but generally, you have to understand this. That is why people want to have multiple backups as far apart as possible. Another aspect, uh, like for example, I'm running YouTube for two years and this is my primary job, but uh, file sizes that I'm storing, I'm not storing the source file. I'm, I don't have hundreds of hard drive. And even then, when I'm just storing the final output from let's say Adobe Premiere and I'm doing H.265 encoding, so the file sizes are not ludicrous, they're still huge. I'm like, uh, for two years, I'm making like five, vid uh, 10 videos per week. Uh, I have like around more or less like seven, 800 uh, gigabytes of data. That's a lot of data. And I have them like in two hard drives. So if one hard drive fails, I do not lose that. But that's it, that's the whole copy. And if I try to upload this kind of data on any cloud service provider, I'm gonna be out of money very quickly. So that is why you have to understand that as the moment you st start to try to back up these kind of scales, videos and all that, yeah, you're going to run out of the cloud data cap and all that very quickly. 
Now, data is an important part, but again, people do not value their data unless it's like very, very important or it's too late. It's generally like I have successfully managed to keep my photos that have been taken in 2009, first camera phone that I have ever used. I have successfully managed to keep those. And again, they're not that important to me right now, but 30 years from now, those will be very precious. So the data is something like that. However, media is another uh, good thing that people like to do because you can have your own personal Netflix. Netflix is no longer in a place where people are like, hey, I like Netflix. Everybody is getting fed up with the fact that there are many TV shows that people used to enjoy Netflix and they just poof, disappeared. Contracts and all that. Again, it's not Netflix fault, but again, it's not even your fault, but you are still paying that. So people are starting to like rip Blu-rays and just put them in their own personal server. Uh, I have like used to have hundreds of uh, basically VCD collections. Yes, I'm that old. Uh, VCDs uh, as a like a movie collection, like hundreds of them. I can put them in a server. It will barely take any space and directly stream from my own system. And I do not have to worry about any service contract getting over. It's like, okay, house is no longer in the uh, basically Netflix or this TV show moved to something else. I don't care. Like I will be completely isolated and more and more people are doing that simply because there are so many streaming services from Disney to this and all that people like just I'll just buy Blu-ray yeah it's as upfront cost but I have the advantage of having that damn thing for eternity or as at least as long as I live so people are want to do this and it is becoming surprisingly common and you can see that uh, you buy any uh, basically branded uh, network attached to it they will say plex servers or kobe uh, kobe system and all that simply because of that people want to use their home servers as a server as a netflix and there are many options it's not like okay plex people say it's a paid software absolutely do it does have a free tier but does not have too many options more than good enough for one individual so let's say you are an enthusiast you want to you know dip your toes and want to understand and learn things uh, try plex if you really want to go deep you can go to Kodi without spending any money and there are many many more options each options have like some pros and some cons and it allows transcoding now transcoding is the interesting fact now transcoding what does that mean that inherently means your server is also processing what does that translate to think of it this way the biggest file i have in terms of movie file it's around 40 gigabyte uh, movie file now that's huge file i cannot keep that kind of file on my mobile phone my mobile phone capacity is like 64 gb and it was already occupied with netflix off offline downloads so i cannot put that but if it's on my server i can do one thing transcoding what does that mean that simply means the file that is in ludicrously expensive format is like 4k uh, hdr and all that jazz it will transcode live Basically, it will not make another file. It will just do that live and send the data through a uh, truncated pipe. So basically, a shrinking pipe, it will send the data. So bit rate will go from, let's say, around 15 to around 150 Mbps to 5 Mbps. It can be done live. What's the benefit of that? Imagine that. Like if I try to pipe that file to this TV, I cannot do that. Inherently, I cannot. The only way I can do that is do through HDMI. And I have to have run my main graphics card. Heck, the file is so heavy, VLC cannot play it. I have to use Pot Player. So these sort of things is no longer an issue if you can do transcoding. So if I want to watch that movie on my mobile phone, ta-da, transcoding allows me to do that. And that also allows uh, for, let's say, in, let's say you are in medium-sized home and you have five, six people. Five, six people can be watching different, different uh, movies from different, different devices. So they, not each device will be like, okay, you have the main rip, let's say main rip is around 25 gigabyte. It's not useful to send 25 gigabytes to your mobile phone as a throughput, like you're just wasting data. So transcoding will allow you, let's shrunk that. But let's say your computer detects, hey, that's a TV and you're connected to the TV through ethernet. It's like, okay, I'm gonna send the full data to it. So transcoding is like basically allows you to become your own content manager. You can be like, hey, uh, all this uh, like this TV make sure it's all the data is there mobile phone transport as much as you can or you can even create accounts which you may be like hey wife for something different because you don't want her to see another fights or homework fights and for kids you may be like hey bro you are too uh, young to see like you know war movies and all that and I'll lock them away you can do these things because it's your server you can do whatever you want so media is also becoming a very useful thing. However, you have to be mindful because transporting is an actual process. Uh, even a cheap, uh, uh, basically NAS, they can do that one or two devices. The moment you start to add more devices, it cannot do. It. And if you actually try to transport very heavy files, those computers will not do that because they have quad cores. Uh, like even if they have quad cores, they have like very low grade quad cores, very low processing is then the oomph is not there. So generally, if you transporting media, transporting is a important thing for you. Like I'm gonna transport media and have like multiple clients, people. Will Will urge you to build your own server simply because uh, transporting servers are like if you can buy enterprise gear that's awesome but it's an enterprise gear it's gonna cost you an arm and a leg and uh, your power bill and noise pollution 
so we will do turn around and nas and all that uh, sonology and all that they are good but they can only handle two three and two, don't even dare to try to encode like very large files if you do that the com computer will be like bro i can't handle this i'm not built for that so that's why people build their own uh, network attached storage because that's perfect utilization of computer hardware for that so that's the media aspect that's the right now the hip thing that every tom dick and harry is doing there's more and more people are getting fed up with this like you have, i'm watching this tv show and poof, it disappeared like i uh, my brother had a paid music service and it's like yeah everything was awesome and they just removed they freaking removed uh, christopher nolan's uh, music on from that and not christopher nolan as in like dark night music and i'm like yep i'm out i'm out i'm just gonna rip everything now so media services is also another useful thing that you can do so this was my presentation on why the heck people give a damn about like re rebuilding your old uh, computer as a media server or a home server or buying a dedicated home server. That's the reason. I hope this video helped you or illuminated some of the aspects of it. In that scenario, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I'd urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.